Let's go through setting up a full Java project. And through doing that, we're going to be making some basic programs that perform some basic mathematical functionalities um, using the rudimentary concepts of Java. So the first thing we want to do is go to File, New Project, click through to Next, Next. And we're going to call this project uh, Basic Java Programs. And we're going to place this in a particular place. We're going to go into our Google Drive. We're going to go into whatever your name is in your Google Drive. You want to make a folder called Demonstrations. And just go ahead and click on Demo. You can click on Demonstrations. And we'll actually go in and just make a, a new folder to hold this particular project in called Basic Java Programs. So we'll go in, basic Java programs, and this is gonna be our project directory. So this is where all the files for our project are gonna be saved. So not only just our Java source code, but also things like libraries that we're using, any sort of external files that we're using. We'll press OK, go to finish. And we'll open it in a new window. So once we're at that screen, click the carrot next to basic Java programs, go to SRC, this is where your Java code actually goes. Right click SRC, go to Java class, and the first program we're going to make is quadratic underscore formula dot Java. Press OK. So the first thing we're going to do is make our main method. So right now the projects that we're making are really go only going to include a main method, and we're going to discuss the class and the basic structure of a class and what can that, that can do for you later. But for now, the class is essentially just what holds your project in place. So we're going to go into the main method. So for a quadratic formula, we need three inputs. So we need to set up a scanner object to receive our inputs from the command line. We'll make a new scanner object by typing capital S scanner. And we can call it whatever we want, but we're going to call it scan. Gets new scanner. And then system.in in parentheses here. This creates a new sta scanner object or I should say initializes a new scanner object. Um, so you might notice that the scanner is red and that means that IntelliJ doesn't currently recognize it. That's because scanner isn't part of the Java standard library. So let's go ahead and just import it. So it's part of the java.util package. So we'll say import java.util, which is the package directory, dot scanner. And that's the particular class that we're going to be importing. So this is what's going to allow us to actually uh, get any sort of input. And the reason the scan is gray right now is because uh, we haven't actually used it yet. And the reason this is gray is because I spelled initializes wrong. So uh, IntelliJ has a spell checker. So if you right click the word, go to spelling, it usually just has it for done for you. Okay, so now that we have our scanner set up, we need to scan in three separate doubles. And the reason we want doubles is because when we get our inputs for uh, for the quadratic formula A, B, and C, we can have a fractional component in those numbers. So we'll say double A gets new, or I'm sorry, gets scan dot next double. Uh, next double is a method of the scan class, and what it does is it it creates a input token so that we can in, we can actually get a new double from the command line that the user can just enter. So you can we can interact from the pro, with the program itself from the command line. We'll do the same thing for B. We'll do the same thing for C. And we might just want to print out a message. We'll probably do this first before we even get our inputs. Let's print out a message to say what this program is even doing. So we'll say something like, uh, welcome, this program receives three inputs as doubles and gives the result of plugging those values into the quadratic formula. So that kind of went off far, so let's go ahead and just reformat this a bit. And you can do that by pressing enter. 
and we can use this string concatenation to put these two strings together. Um, we might want to say a couple more things. So we can say something like, so something to note is that um, imaginary numbers aren't immediately supported. So for now, we're not going to actually include uh, imaginary numbers. So we can say something like, um, only real number results will be given. And we can also make a note. We can make sure the user knows not to actually use uh, 0 for a, because if we plug in 0 for a, that would involve dividing by 0. Uh, please enter a non-zero double for a. Okay, cool. So that's our welcome message. And so let's go ahead and just print a message before each of our inputs so the user knows what's going on on the command line. So first we'll say, please enter a non-zero value for A. And down here we'll say the same thing, but for B. So we'll say, please enter, we'll say, please enter a non-zero value for B or we'll, we can actually be zero here. So please enter a value for B. And then for the last line, please enter a value for C. So something I just noticed is that I don't have line numbers shown. So if you right click on the margins right here, uh, you can click show line numbers and that's gonna stay uh, initialized in the settings. So this makes it much easier to communicate with other programmers that you might be working with. So you can say, for example, hey, look at the, you know, I think there might be an error on line 18 and then we the programmer can look right at line 18 because the it's indicated right there so now what we need to do is with the quadratic formula you can potentially get two answers so the formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and then all over 2a so that plus or minus um that doesn't really exist in java so we'd actually have to um have two separate variables for results so we'll have our first result be double result one, and then we'll have double result two. We'll fill them in separately. So for result one, that's gonna be negative one times b plus, we'll do the plus first. We'll do math.sqrt. So math.sqrt is a method of the math class that takes the square root of whatever you pass as a parameter into the parentheses. So b squared, we'll just say b times b, minus 4 times a times c. And then we have to take all of that, so the negative 1 times b, so the negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and divide that by 2 times a. And we're going to do something very similar for result 2. The only difference is that we're going to say we're going to subtract the square root and the numerator. So we'll say for result 2, We'll say negative 1 times b minus math.sqrt and all that stuff. So now we actually just need to format our output. So we'll say the first result of the quadratic formula for the values a, and then we'll put a comma in. B and C is, and then we'll put in result one here. Just do a little bit of formatting. There we go, that was good. And we'll do the same thing down here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. So we'll say the second result of the quadratic formula for the values a, b, and c is result 2. So let's go ahead and try this program out. To try it out, just right click anywhere in the body of the text and go to run quadratic formula. Okay, so here in the console, you can see, welcome, this program receives three inputs as doubles and gives the result of plugging those values into the quadratic formula. Only real number results will be given. Please enter a non-zero double for A. 
and then it says please enter a non-zero double for A again. Um, so we can already see that there might be just uh, some formatting changes that we want to make to this code, but let's go ahead and just run it first and see if it logically works. So we'll enter 2 for A, 9 for B, and then 3 for C. And there we go. The first result of the quadratic formula for the values 2.09.0 and C is negative 0.36 that irrational number, and then the second result of the quadratic formula for the values 2.09.0 and c is negative 4.13 in that irrational number. So we can see that there are a few changes that we need to make to this. Um, the first one is that instead of printing out a value for c, I just printed out the letter c, so we'll change that here. So we actually just want to print out the, uh, the value currently being held by the variable c and not actually the letter c. And I also want to take out this last part that says please enter a non-zero double for A because it already gets said. So we don't need to say that again. And one more thing we probably want to do is put everything, put something on a new line. So how about here, I'll put in a backslash n. And backslash n is an escape sequence in Java that means new line. So it means that if you're inside of a string, like we are here, backslash n will actually take you to a new line. So let's try this out and see how it looks. So welcome, this program receives three inputs as doubles and gives the result of plugging those values into the quadratic formula. Only real number results will be given. Please enter a non-zero value for A. So we'll try one. Please enter a value for B. Try two. Please enter a value for C. Try one. And there we go. So we get negative one as our first result and negative one as our second result. So, let's see if there's anything else that we want to change. I think also, just like as a formatting thing, I'd like to have a space here. So to do that, we can actually just put a backslash in here. So that's going to create an extra space. So we'll try running it one more time. So please enter a non-zero value for A. We'll say 1, say for B, 0. And then we'll say for C, 0. That should give us 0 and 0. Good. So that's our first program. This is a program that uh, gets three inputs for the quadratic formula and then spits out an answer when you give those inputs for the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and start a new program. So go to SR, click on SRC, right click, go to new Java class, and this one we're going to call So we'll call the second class circle area perimeter. And the idea here is that we're going to write a program that gets the radius for a circle uh, and outputs the area and outputs the circumference of that circle. So first thing we'll do is we'll just make a main method, public static void main and sh uh, string bracket arcs for the main method. So the first thing we had to do, if you remember from the first program, was create a scanner object. So let's do that first. So we'll say scanner scan gets new scanner, and we'll say system.in. So once again, we need to import this. So we'll say import java.util.scanner. So we'll have a similar sort of greeting message at the beginning of the program. And we'll say something like, uh, welcome. This program gets a radius as a double and outputs the area. You want to put a space there. The area and the circumference of the circle with that radius. Okay, I'm just going to put a backslash in here like we did before, so it goes to a new line. And I'll put another one here, just so there's a space between um, our first input message and our welcome message. So we'll have to get a radius in, so we'll say double radius gets new scan dot next double. And there should be a pair of parentheses after next double. So if you remember the formula to find the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we'll say double area gets 
math.py. So math.py is a built-in constant in the math class. So it's just built in for you, so you don't have to type out 3.1415 and so on. So pi times radius squared, so times radius. So we'll have two radius there. And then to calculate the circumference, that's just 2 times pi, so math.pi, times radius. So now that we have area and circumference calculated, let's go ahead and uh, give an output message. Before we do that, why don't we just go ahead and write our uh, input messages here. So we have to say, like, please enter a value for area or please enter a value for radius. So let's do that. So system.out.println please enter a value for the radius of the circle. So we'll say system.out.println. And we'll say, I'm given a circle with radius, and then use the string concatenation radius. The area of the circle is area. The circumference of the circle is circumference. All right, so let's take a look at this and just make sure uh, there are no errors. So there should be a semicolon here, we already see that. Uh, it looks like we already have one here. So anytime that there's an error, IntelliJ is pretty good at picking it up. So if you notice there's a squiggle under here and it says uh, comma or parenthesis expected. So it's actually gonna be this plus sign here. We need to put a plus sign between uh, our variable circumference and this string with a period in it. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. So we'll run it. So welcome, this program gets a radius as a double and now puts the area and the circumference of the circle with that radius. So I can see that there's already a space here, so there we don't want a space there, so we'll change that. I'll we'll change that up here. Please enter a value for the radius of the circle. So we'll say five. So given a circle with radius five, the area of the circle is 78.53 and the circumference of the circle is 31.41. So, so something I noticed is that there is no space between these two things. Um, and in fact, I actually kind of want the area message to be on the next line. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a backslash n after the colon. So let's do one more run through and just see how it looks. So uh, let's say radius one, the area is 3.14, circumference is 6.28. Perfect. So that's a program that given a radius, finds the area and circumference of this corresponding circle with that particular radius. So let's do one more. Let's do one more program. In this program, we're actually gonna use some conditional statements. This is gonna be called temperature converter. So as usual, type our public static void main. Now we won't always be using a main method, but um, for the first few programs that we write, we're really just gonna be running in a main method, so we will be using them, but not every class actually needs it. Oh, I spelled converter wrong. Um, that's too bad, we'll just keep it as it is. Um, so let's have a, have a message, so welcome. Um, this program takes in a temperature as input and an input indicating whether we are going from, we're converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius. So go change that to Celsius, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a backslash in here. I want this on the next line. All right, so that should look good. So we, we actually need two inputs here. So first we'll set up our scanner object. So scanner scan gets new scanner, system.in. Um, once again, we need to import scanner. So go ahead and go up here, import java.util.scanner. 
there are in fact other things to import it just turns out that we're just really using scanner for this particular set of programs that we're writing so the first thing we'll get is um, a, the letter F or C that indicates whether we're starting with Fahrenheit or Celsius um, so we'll say please enter F if we're converting from Fahrenheit and then we'll say please enter C if we're converting from Celsius now it actually so something we can do here I'd actually really like to put this F and the C in quotes but if you notice what happens is when we put it when we try to put it in quotes um, Java can't figure out where to read the string from because strings always start off with this quotation mark so when it sees an ending quotation mark it assumes that's the end of the string so it kind of just screws everything up so it turns out this backslash character is pretty important and what it indicates is that it's an escape sequence and there are really only a few escape sequence that you really need to know and that's backslash quotation mark so backslash quotation mark allows you to actually put a quotation mark inside of a string. And then there's also backslash apostrophe, so we'll do that as well. So backslash quotation mark, uh, two, a set of uh, backslash quotation marks around the F and the C, and then a backslash apostrophe here. Okay. So then to actually get a string in, we'll say scan, or we'll say string temp key gets and we'll say scan dot next line and that allows us to get a string in from the command line so next we'll get the uh, we'll get the numerical value of the temperature so we'll say please enter the numerical value of the temperature and that'll be a double. So we'll say double temp value gets scan dot next double. Okay, so now we're going to use an if statement. So we want to see whether or not we're converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we'll say something like this. We'll say if temp key dot equals f so if you want to test a quality for strings this is something we'll go over later but I just want to show you this I'm just showing you for the context of the program if temp key dot equals f so that means if whatever the user entered was f then we'll convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius so why don't we go ahead and try to figure out how to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius so the formula to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius is the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 and then uh, we divide everything by 1.8. So let's try that. So we'll just keep that on the screen so we have that as reference. Cool. So if temp key dot equals F, we'll say uh, double result gets and then so it, we're, we want the Celsius so we're gonna say whatever the Fahrenheit temperature is so temp value minus 32 and then we want to divide that by 1.8 so divided by 1.8 and then we'll just print out a message and we'll say when converting temp value from Fahrenheit to Celsius, we get, or we should say the result is, and then it's going to be results. Uh, we'll go ahead and format that on the next line as well. So we'll say backslash n, put this on a new line as well. So it looks nice and clean um, then we'll have an else if 
So this is if the first condition is not true, then we'll check to see if temp key dot equals C. So if temp key dot equals C, uh, the conversion looks like this. It's going to be whatever the Celsius temperature is times 1.8 plus 32. So we'll say double result equals temp value times 1.8 plus 32. So we'll print out a message that says when converting temp value from Celsius to Fahrenheit The result is results. And I'm going to have an else statement. So the else statement happens if neither of these conditions are true. So if temp key doesn't equal F or temp key doesn't equal C, that means the user input something wrong. So we'll just print out an error message that says something like not a valid key. Next time, make sure you enter either F or C. I'll put a backslash in here too. Good, make it go to a new line. And that should be everything that we need. So let's see how this looks. Um, one thing I see is that I kind of want to change all of these. Uh, this is actually a pro Celsius and Fahrenheit are actually proper. So I'm going to go ahead and capitalize each of those instances. And then Fahrenheit, the same thing. I'll capitalize the F in Fahrenheit for all its instances. All right, so let's see how this looks. So we'll go ahead and run it. So welcome. This program takes in a temperature as input and an input indicating whether we're converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius. So please enter F if we're converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So let's convert from Fahrenheit first. So please enter a valid numerical temperature. So we'll enter 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So when converting 85 from Celsius, Fahrenheit to Celsius, the result is 29.4444. So there's already, I already see some formatting things we can change. Um, we can go ahead and uh, put a space in between is and result. Um, so let's try to convert from Celsius. And also I want a, uh, I want a new line between these two print statements. So let's go ahead and run it. So let's try to convert from Celsius this time. So we'll say uh, negative 40 degrees Celsius converts to uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I think one more thing I'm going to do is just put in a label. So we'll say degrees Celsius here to say we're converting the result is this many degrees Celsius. And we'll say here the result is this many degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, let me think. And then we haven't checked the else statement yet. So let's try to enter something that's not F or C. So not a valid key. Next time, make sure you enter either F or C. So let's just see how our formatting looks for F one more time. So if it's uh, so if it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to be 21.1 degrees Celsius. All right, so that looks better. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, so we just set up uh, three Java programs inside of a Java directory named Basic Java Programs. So because we saved it in our Google Drive, if you go back into your Google Drive go into the name that you have. If you go into your demonstrations folder that you made and you go into basic Java programs and you go into SRC, here are all your Java programs. This is uh, circle area perimeter.java, this is quadratic formula.java, and this is temperature converter.java. 